Now, DNA can go through a process that is called denaturation. Denaturation is important for understanding because it is very involved in the process of a technique called PCR. Generally, when DNA denatures or comes apart from a double helix to two single strands, the genetic code is going to remain intact. And that's because remember, what's actually holding the strand itself together is covalent bonds, which are much stronger. But holding strand to strand together is hydrogen bonds, which are much weaker. These are what are going to be broken with some heat. This is called denaturation, breaking of the two strands together or apart. When this happens, we also can visualize it because bases that have now been stacked on each other when in a helix is are no longer stacked, that is lost. And this actually results in a increase in UV absorbance. Denaturation can occur, this breaking of hydrogen bonds can occur by high temperature or by change in pH. And again, temperature in particular can be used to control this breaking and then putting back together of DNA um, in PCR. Now this process is reversible because these strands are complementary um, and because hydrogen bonds can easily be reformed by cooling, we can then put our strands back together, reforming our double helix. This is what's called annealing. So again, DNA exists as this double helix at normal temperatures, but if you elevate a temperature, the DNA strands will dissociate. This can also be thought of as melting. The two strands will then re-anneal or come back together when the temperature is lowered back towards the normal state. And this process of going back and forth, reversible denaturation and then annealing is the basis of a technique we will talk about in our later conversations called polymerase chain reaction or PCR. And as I just mentioned, we can monitor when strands are coming apart and coming back together, denaturing and annealing by monitoring the UV spectroscopy at a nanometer of 260. Remember that single bases, single nucleotides will have an absorbance at 260 nanometers. And as we just said, when those bases are coiled together in our double helix of DNA, the absorbance is a bit lower. But when we separate them out, when we separate the strands and those nucleotides are a bit more free, that UV absorbance will increase. Now this denaturation can be affected by different um, types of or content within the DNA. In particular, the content of the DNA will affect the what we call melting point. This is that the midpoint, the melting point at which we are seeing this denaturation. So for example, having a high CG content will increase your melting point. Remember this is because C and G binding is more stable. So it takes more heat to melt a DNA strand that has more CG content. Also, of course, it's going to be dependent on the length. If you have longer DNA, 
you have a higher melting point. Short DNA will have a lower melting point. The melting point is also going to be dependent on the solution the DNA is in. So the pH and the ionic strength or the state of dissolved salts in the DNA will also determine when it will melt. If you have a lot of salt or your pH is very high or very low, you're already going to start to um, potentially uh, change that state of denaturation. So for example, high salt, a lot of salt actually stabilizes DNA strands uh, and thus you have to increase your melting point in order to break those strands apart. Having a pH that is very, very high or very, very low will actually cause your strands to denature already, which will make your melting point slightly lower. Now, again, these are all important when we're talking about a particular technique looking at DNA and nucleic acids called PCR, which we will discuss in further in our next uh, set of content.